The Trump administration announcing a plan that could allow you to import prescription drugs, drugs from Canada. Now, that way, Americans would benefit from the deals Big Pharma makes with other countries. Here now is Fox News medical correspondent, Dr. Mark Siegel. Good to see you, Dr. Great to Siegel. see you, David. So how would this work? Well, it's actually, it starts off at a state level, where basically Health and Human Services is going to allow states to decide whether they want to bring in drugs from foreign countries that may be selling for less money there than we're paying for them here. And the, the key here is that they have to be of a quality that the FDA would, would approve and say there's no difference. You're not bringing back something that can be dangerous to our citizens. You're not bringing back a different chemical. You're simply bringing back something that we know of, that we're aware of, that's selling here already, but is selling less there. It's looking at it as a global market. Uh. So, Dr. Siegel, in the last week, you know, Bernie Sanders took a group of people over the border to go buy insulin, which I think is trading, selling at $375 here and was selling for $37 over the counter there. Mm -hmm. Is that something that U.S. citizens will be able to buy something like insulin now at $37 with this? Yes. Short answer is yes, that's, that's the idea. I think that, that a lot of people, especially conservatives, don't like this idea. And the reason they don't like it is because it seems to be a way of manipulating the market rather than a free market idea. But I also don't like the idea that other countries are freeloading off of drugs, many of which are made here. That bothers me. And I don't like that my patients aren't getting medication. But you would me. agree that if insulin is selling for $37 elsewhere, we should be able to buy it $37? You there. bet. Okay. But, but and, uh, A, that, for clear. sure I agree with that. And I also think, by the way, that we're jumping to the head of the line to get the latest insulin without necessarily thinking, what about the older insulin? Maybe it's just as good. So we go past generics. We go past biosimilars. I also know FDA has an initiative, David, over the next year to get more biosimilars on the market, which has also been blocked by the drug manufacturers. Maybe they're the biosimilars. Exact, they're, maybe they're the exact same drug, but they have a slightly different Mark, chemical last, configuration. Last question, just before the panel goes: When do we think this would pass? So it's going to pass over the next couple of months. It won't be in ac in actionable for another year or so. So we're not talking about anything exactly. before 2020, 2021. Two, two, two Doctor, things. Doctor, who did? Oh. Who does this Go impact ahead, the most, right? Is this, is this going to impact the pharmacy benefit manufacturers? Is it going to impact the drug makers? Who is this actually going to impact uh, on a market basis? A great question. And I'm hoping, of course, that it will impact the patients because we already know that patients bear the brunt of when list prices are too high. So list prices are high. The pharmacy benefit manager or the insurance company gets their profit for sure. We don't see what the price is. We want to see what the price is now. Trump administration is working on that. When it gets down to the level of the patient, I want them to be able to pay less. A lot of my patients go to the Internet and say, wait a minute, I can get insulin a lot cheaper that way. Well, we don't want that to happen because that's kind of black market stuff, and we, don't, we can't ensure quality that way. I like the idea of the FDA being involved. The goal is for the patient to pay less. The problem... Uh how do you have quality control? Most of the drugs that come into Canada come from foreign countries. There's no way, the Canadians have said, there's no way they can guarantee the quality of drugs coming into this country. The FDA can't do it in, in its current state. So how do you, one, control quality? Two, how do you uh, pay for the development of drugs since, uh, yes, we subsidize the rest of the world, but until we get trade agreements, we don't want to shut down research here. Steve, you're asking almost unanswerable questions as usual. So, <laughs> because you're, because he's a smart guy on this panel. You're bringing the you're bringing the ringers you got here, the right? You're ringers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, 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 nobody fed me these answers. So, <laughs> so look, look. The answer is that one point you were hinting at that I want to make is we always say here all the drugs are developed in the United States. It's not really true anymore because a lot of the drug companies are multinationals and the, the drug could actually be developed in another country. But we pay for it. Yeah. That's the problem, that we pay for it. I like the idea that FDA is an essential part of this process, what we're talking about today with this new idea being rolled out by HHS. I'm going to agree with you. I don't want any drug brought in here that can't be quality controlled whether it's from Canada, whether it's from China, whether it's from Europe, wherever it is, if they can't say to me that you're giving the same drug to your patient and I can, you can't verify that, I don't want it here. Okay, this and, is something I know about. Uh, Go ahead. Well, I was just <laughs> going to ask about uh, PBMs, pharmaceutical benefit managers. Uh, the administration tanked on that one. Uh, how do we keep the PBMs out of this? Well, the, uh, uh, we're not going to, and he hinted at that as well. They're going to be there taking their profit. The biggest, thing, the biggest thing that I thought was a step forward with PBMs is the issue of price transparency. I want to know what, who's paying what, 
and whether it's going to be in the copay. Is it going to be reflected in the copay? Yes. Who's making the profits? I want to know what profit the pharmacy benefit manager is getting out of this so that a patient can be aware of it and a doctor. Okay. Well, you know, there's a health ministry in Canada, so they basically oversee the quality of the medications that go into the country. And listening to Bernie Sanders last night, he says, I can go, what, 20 minutes uh, up north and get free health care? That free health care comes with 50% income taxes, mind you. And those provinces... And you for forgot the four-month wait. Yeah. Well, okay, depends on what procedure you're... MRI, a month and a half wait. Mm -hmm. You know, Hip surgery, my grandmother three months actually one twenty five percent national sales tax. My grandmother uses your name and says, "I'm Susan's yeah. grandmother. <laughs> Give me that hip." No, no, no. But my point is, look, it comes with a cost. Free health care is not free, so it's basically fifty percent income taxes. And then, Correct. by the way, the uh, provinces that are saddled with paying for these medical bills, they're right now in debt. They have to find some way to raise cash to basically make them whole once again. So they are. But we shouldn't move off the idea that our pharmaceutical prices are way too expensive expensive it's the probably the one bipartisan thing that we can all agree with we want to lower and, and did it prices. I'm just wondering if it all started because of Medicare the prescription drug plan in particular the more government gets into things the more you have to come up with these screwy answers of how to get out of it but that's the point Susie's making here I think which is there's a huge cultural clash going on right now and I'll tell you which side I'm on I don't think government provides quality health care I think government provides decreased quality pays doctors less pays hospitals less Pos hospitals can't afford the research they need to come up with the new drugs they can't afford the research they can't afford to bring in the top stars we're going to end up with a decreased quality if we go over to that other system. Medicare for all is never passing in the United States, whether you add Medicare Advantage to it, the way Kamala Harris is saying, or not. Well, Medicare Advantage is subsidized. It's subsidized. It, yeah. it, 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 well, but at least it's a little bit higher quality than yes, state it Medicare is. is. Yes, but it is. When it but the employer-based health care system and the private insurance market is the engine that's driving innovation in the United States. It shouldn't even be on the table, this discussion. So you weren't buying what Bernie Sanders was telling us about how everything was going to be perfect once we have universal health care. He is not. I guarantee you that's not where he's getting his health care. Yeah. He's getting, right. he's getting a nice private policy that he doesn't want to give to anybody else. It'd be nice if we all had what Congress has, right? Absolutely. Doctor, thank you very much. Good to see you.